Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 and welcome to a product overview video in this video I'll be taking a look at the true blue mini I'll be taking a look at the final true blue mini in the series well I say that because there are four um, I'm gonna talk about very briefly what this is in case no one has seen my other two videos on this series of memory sticks uh, and this is a standalone video therefore but basically uh, true blue mini is a series of memory sticks for the PlayStation classic which basically means you don't have to do any of the hacking your so, as I've said previously, I'm sure hacking, I mean, I've done it. Hacking is very simple, very easy and stuff like that, but not everyone has exceptionally fast internet. Not everyone has, you know, um, capped, un uncapped internet, I should say. And, you know, doesn't necessarily know where to get the, the ISO files and things like that. All the bits and bobs, essentially, and thumbnails to make it look shiny and fantastic when it shows up in, you know, uh, your PlayStation menu when you turn on the classic and also some people simply can't be asked so true blue mini released a series of sticks there are four sticks there is the fighting stick which is nothing but fighting games I think that's the entry level one possibly the cheapest uh, then there is the uh, weed pack which are uh, one of my subscribers sent to me very kindly and I did a review of very very recently really quite liked it then there was the crackhead pack which started this whole process off of doing these videos which one of my subscribers also very kindly sent to me and I was overly impressed with so ultimately it's plug and play you stick it into PlayStation Classic port port 2 or I'll show you it in a minute anyway the product or if you want to do multiplayer you stick in a USB hub that comes with it stick your second player pad into that and then stick your true blue mini into that and yes uh, the uh, so you had the fighting kit pack you had the uh, the weed pack and you had the crackhead pack and they got this naming convention of you know being edgy and drugs and shit like that and I guess the strength of the drug determines how you know how big the pack is I would say um, I don't have the fighting pack um, I'm just not a big enough fan of fighting games I like them but not so much that I would just want nothing but fighting games on a stick and also if you bear in mind when you step away from 3d fighters on the PlayStation as a 2d fighting system it's just weak it's just weak compared to the Saturn I'm not saying that everything on it is 2d is pants and rubbish but if you look at the stuff like you know the King of Fighters or the, the Neo Geo games and the Capcom games they're missing tons of frames of animation and stuff like that. Anyway, right, I would say upon all those sticks, they're very reasonably priced. Depends on where you buy them. Buy from AliExpress, that's the cheapest place to buy it. Or buy them from Amazon, because AliExpress will take, well, 15 to 20 days. Amazon, uh, you can get it next day sometimes, but you're probably going to pay a little bit more. But ultimately, I've never seen these sticks over £20. And since, you know, they pretty much, the, the ones I mentioned, have 100 games on, that's brilliant. There is crossover between the games across those two sticks I've recently reviewed. So it'll be interesting to see how it fares with this stick. But this stick is the True Blue Mini Overdose Pack. Yep, yeah, the naming convention suggests that this one is the biggest, uh, as does the boxer, the biggest and best of all the True Blue Minis. 200 plus games. I think it's literally like 200 and two. Why don't they just say 202 games? I've never understood that. And um, basically, yeah, it includes 200 plus games, True Blue Mini Overdose Pack. It's a 128 gigabyte card. So that's the biggest card of this entire series. Now, why am I reviewing this? Well, the people who distributes, you know, this card, at least in this country and Europe, very kindly, they saw uh, my video on the Crackhead Pack. And because my Facebook page is linked to the front of my YouTube channel, and uh, if, even if someone's not friends with you on Facebook, they can send you a message through, uh, you know, um, Messenger. So, so many clocks, so little time. See what I did there? Send you a message through Messenger. And they sent it in November and because they watched my video. And um, I guess they assume that they send me this and I review it, that it might, you know, increase their sales. Unlikely, because I'm a very small channel. But I do like doing overviews and stuff like that. And I do like re receiving stuff in the mail such as tap i've got a bunch of stuff from my subscribers and this is the first time a uh, manufacturer has sent me one or distributor for a manufacturer so that's really cool 
just like to clarify something here, I've never, ever, ever asked for anything, and I never will. I know people say you never know what you're going to get until you at least ask. That's not for me. You know, if people want to send me stuff, that's all gin dandy, but I'm not going to ask. There's nothing wrong with people who do it. That's just my protocol. So anyway, they sent me a message in November, but it wasn't until Christmas Day where I was going through various messages when I was at the pub, uh, having a through Christmas jars, and... Um, because if you, they're not on your friend list, I've talked about this in the, the Christmas video where one of the people, uh, you know, I have, you know, I fell out of touch with years ago, saw a video I did and contacted me through, uh, you know, YouTube, then Messenger, same thing happened. Um, but this, yeah, they, they show up in this weird section of, maybe it's just me, you know, maybe I should get a white stick, uh, of your Messenger section where it's not necessarily, I don't know, how it sorts it and stuff like that. But basically, I forget the name, it was very broken English, um, but they did confirm the, the website. I, it wasn't AliExpress or something like that, but it was in China. And they said, oh, you broken English. We saw your video. Um, we very much would like send uh, you another stick. And they obviously saw both videos, so they knew that I didn't have this one, and maybe they watched it, knew that I wasn't particularly keen on the fighting stick. So they said they would send it to me. And check the website and stuff like that out. And I knew it wasn't like, you know, hooky or anything like that. So they sent me this. Now, quickly, I will just, uh, you know, go into it and show you it. But I'm pretty sure uh, you know what's in it. And as I've said on the other two videos, would have been nice if they gave me the option of buying them without the hub. Because now, granted, I didn't buy any of them. Now, I have three hubs. Um, but you have, and it looks exactly the same as all the other ones. It just has its strength or flavour, if you will, which is the True Blue Mini Overdose Pack. Plug and play, either in port 2 or into, as I said, the USB hub, into um, USB 2 on your PlayStation Classic. Power it on, does exactly what it does with all the other six to ones I've made myself. Thanks for that, plastic. Uh, you know, and also the other Trooper Minis. You know, flashes, comes on, interrupts the, the screen for a few moments, and then its own menu comes up. So, what I'm going to do is, because this is the biggest one, 200 games, I'm very, very interested to see what's on here. So I will show you that, I will jump into the other room and film the games on there, talk about the inclusion of some of them, um, if I played them and stuff like that, and possibly, you know, is it a good selection of games, and try and see if there's any crossover between this stick and the other two sticks. There's bound to be with the three sticks. The fighting games must have must cross over surely but because that's one thing i do find weird is between the weed pack uh the crackhead pack and the overdose pack although i don't know that yet about this one i don't understand why there is crossover on these products i mean is it i, I don't want to say laziness because obviously these are my opinions and i'm very very happy to the individual or the you know the manufacturers or develop, developers distributors who sent this to me but um i'm going to be honest uh you know this is uh this is my subjective review so yeah, I will say, I don't understand why there's crossover. Is it laziness? Is it just because they've only have a certain amount of ROMs or each, each stick done by an individual and it's just their taste of games? Anyway, right, I'm going to go to the other room. We're going to fire it up on my PlayStation. I'm going to talk you through the games and generally what I think before jumping back and just saying whether I think this is the best stick or not and should you buy it over the others and something else i really want to quickly mention because a few people have talked to me about um you know you can run all three of them in the hub into port two at the same time so i fired that up and it takes you straight to the a's it's worth mentioning though with all these sticks um whenever you turn it off it will then re uh, when you reboot it it will go to the game that you were last on which is a bit pants i prefer they did you know it's not a dip the deal breaker it reset itself to um you know the first or the entry in, in the alphabet now as you can see from the wheel of cheese at the top of the screen that you can tell that there are a lot of titles on here 200 plus titles as i mentioned in the start of this video now uh, we're going to go through these together and I'm going to tell you what I know about each one and whether um, some, obviously a lot of them I'm not going to have played because I don't know how big the library is on the PlayStation. What was it on the Saturn? 400 games? I'm assuming it's got to be bigger than that. So between this stick and the other two sticks, that's 400, isn't it? So yeah, it could be interesting, you know, to see what's on it. Anyway. Ace Combat 2, love the original Ace Combat 2, absolute fantastic third person arcade uh, combat game that I believe is based on the arcade machine. I had it, still have my original copy. Ace Combat 3, Electrosphere, I'm not sure why they went for 3 
and not two. Um, I guess it comes down to what they could find, but not played that, so looking forward to playing that. Uh, Aussie Football League, well that's interesting because it's Electronic Arts, it's 99, hopefully it's quite good. I've never played an Aussie Rules football game, so the other great thing about this is whatever the titles are, the ones I've never played, it gives me a great opportunity to do gameplay, so that's another cool thing about these, you know, these memory sticks. A way to jump into a whole bunch of games you've never played. Uh, air Combat. Right, forget what I said. It's Air Combat that I played because that's the one by Namco. Anyway, so Air Combat must be a knockoff. That Rizzle Air Combat is absolutely fantastic. Uh, AITV, Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. Uh, I don't know if I played that. I played the one on the 3DO. I don't know what they're like on the PlayStation. I've got a nagging memory. Maybe my brother had it and I wasn't too impressed. But it's survival horror. Uh, it's third person. It could be worth uh, a laugh. A laugh. Aladdin in Desirous Revenge, no idea what that is, it's by Sony, I oh, know it's Disney Interactive, so, well, I don't know, it's Disney Interactive, but it's not based on the animated movie, that's weird, like I said, I've never heard of it, uh, Alien Resurrection, never played it, love Alien Trilogy, so I'm very, very happy that this is on here, it's a third person shooter, I mean, hopefully it's good, um, uh, like I said, obviously I've not played a lot of these, it's going to turn out. Hopefully it's good, because I love um, Alien Trilogy, but, I mean, it's based on a movie that's god-awful. Uh, Alien Trilogy, yeah, see, this is where we're talking crossover, unless I'm confusing it with my hacked stick and not the True Blue Mini one, but I'm pretty sure that's crossover right there, which is, I'll touch upon that at the end of the video. I don't, I don't understand why, you know. Um, Alundra 2, quality title, absolutely quality title, so that's cool. Um, Anna Kornikova's tennis, because she was not that good at tennis, but everyone forgave her because she was a fitty. It's a tennis game. It's by Namco. Interesting. Well, it's a tennis game by Namco, so it should be all right. Pocket Star and Bruce Willis. This is an absolutely fantastic game. Think um, Robotron kind of game, you know, with jewels because it's dual sticks uh, with, you know, well, it's voiced uh, by Bruce Willis and it's it's a run and gun game. It's 3D. It's absolutely fantastic. That's that's brilliant that that's on there. I still own my original one, but no, that's cool. Um, okay, the Atari Collection one. That's, yeah, I really don't care about this. See, there's a few collections I'm told that are on it, but if it's the arcade collection one, then I'm not really sure I'm going to give a shit as much as I'm a retro gamer of what's actually on it. Uh, KD Terry Collection 2. So that's got Paperboy and Gauntlet and Road Blaster. So now we're getting up there. I do like that. I do like these um, retro collection, you know, compilations. Arcade, uh, the Midway Collection 2. I can't read any of that, but we started too. So hopefully it's not really, really, really early stuff. But you can expect gameplays of these compilation ones because I absolutely love it. Area 51 by Midway. That's a really really cool game armored core is a really really cool game now also you might think some of these i'm saying are really cool and i really enjoy it crap but remember kids taste is subjective armored core uh project phantasma not played that but it's an armored core game how bad can it be and angry men <laughs> army men i love these games army men and another reason is you know it's by the 3do company as well um i haven't played these in years so that's the other thing i like these big fat compilations for having 200 games is <clears throat> do they still hold up or have i got uh member berry goggles on Army Men 3D, cool. Batman Beyond, I have played that. It's pants. I mean, it's Batman Beyond, you know, so it's wasted because it's pants. Batman Forever, absolutely shocking game. Shocking game. But interesting the purpose of a gameplay because at the time we were all super excited for it because it's, it's a Batman game in a huge environment of driving around and going in buildings and shit. It's shit. <clears throat> Uh, Beast Wars Transformers, I'm not really a massive fan of Beast Wars and Beasties, but it's Transformers, as long as you've got transforming effects in it, um, I'll be happy, but I've not played it, but how bad can it be, because Beast Wars itself, while I'm kind of, you know, cool back then, graphically was a bit pants, because it was a CGI show, uh, Beyblade, let it cool, there we go, I quite like that game, uh, Blaze and Dragons, never heard of it, I know, and something else, if you say you've never heard of it, meh, sorry, uh, Brian Lara Crip, yes! Never played it, but I've been hankering for a cricket game. I really have been hankering for a cricket game. There are, there are just not that many cricket games, so I really kind of am curious as to how it would play out. Uh, and it's Codemasters, and Codemasters are cool. Bugs Bunny and Taz, Time Busters, uh, Infograms. I think that's just like, you know, Chad where Bugs Bunny lost in time. Don't know about that, but hey. Burning Road, I'm assuming that's a Twisted Metal knockoff or something like that. Not heard of it. Again, excited though to get, get into playing loads of these. Buster Move for puzzle game uh 
is that supposed to be Bob and Bob? Because it's not Tato, is it? But anyway, yeah, uh, I do know the Buster Move series. Never played it back in the day, but you know it's kind of considered to be pretty good. Buster Move ninety nine. Hence the fact there are multiple entries in it. Uh, Buster Bros Collection. No idea what that is. Uh, Seat of Final Resistance. No idea what that is. Carmageddon. Love Carmageddon, but uh, I had it on the PC back then, and it was patched, so you had people and not zombies. Who remembers that old shit? And it was rolling 3D effects. Uh, I do remember playing it on a P90 without 3D effects, so this will be something akin to that. Never played on the PlayStation. Have it on the N64 where it's awful. So, quite looking forward to that. Oh, but then it's calm again. How well does that hold up? <clears throat> CC Red Alert Allies. Command & Conquer, basically. Command & Conquer was epic on the PlayStation. I didn't have that one, but I had a couple of like, the, the um, Command & Conquer games, and they're solid, solid, you know, titles. So, yeah. Um... Allies, Soviet. We're just looking at the box art. Camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. Points for the quote. Uh, Chocobo's Dungeon 2. So, what's a Chocobo from? Is that Final Fantasy? I don't know. Uh, Civilization 2. That's interesting. That's a nice inclusion. You would hope as well, because of the size of the catalogue of games, that there's going to be a lot of you know different types and genres colony wars uh, i'm pretty sure that's a crossover title on these sticks so again not really sure about that uh or happy about that covert ops nuclear dawn activision never heard of it i'll give it a go creature shock i'm having a brain fart about that that i heard of it but i can't remember it uh deception 3 dark illusion no idea digimon digital card battle couldn't care less because it's Digimon. Discworld Noir, brilliant, brilliant. I do like Discworld. Uh, obviously, Terry Pratchett's uh, similar series of you know, um, novel set in the Discworld. Double Dragon. There's a Double Dragon on the PlayStation. Don't know what it's like. Didn't know there was. That could be quite interesting, especially if it's 3D. Dragon Balls Legends. Never played it. Quite fond of the Dragon Ball Ball Z games. Dragon Balls. Dragon Ball Z game. Dragon Ball Z because I'm British. But you know, uh, only played modern ones. Duke Nukem Land of the Babes, interesting game, departure from the original style of Duke Nukem, but I fondly remember that, so that's kind of cool. Duke Nukem Total Meltdown, don't, I know of it, but I don't think I've ever played it, so I can't tell what, you know, whether it's third person or first person, so I'm pretty sure it's third person, because the original Duke Nukem game was the only one that's first person. Doom 2000, not my cup of tea, but very cool for those, those people who love Doom and that sort of gameplay. <clears throat> Earthworm Gym 2, awesome. Uh, I did a, I have done a gameplay of a few things on there because I know that is. Uh, I didn't know it was on the PlayStation, even though I had a PlayStation back in the day. Um, I'm assuming it's just got better sound and stuff. I don't know. Uh, Evil Dead: Hell to the King. That's a crossover game as well, and it's not a particularly good game, which is a shame because it's Evil Dead. In fact, I go as far as to say it's a terrible game. So why double up on it? Evil Zone, no idea. Exhumed, fantastic game. Uh, first person shooter exploration set in Egypt and stuff like that. Fantastic game, just sadly nowhere near as good as a Saturn version. A Fear Effect 2, um, <clears throat> I got memories of it being not very good, but you know, it's IDOS, so we'll hold up on that. FIFA Rose of the World Cup 98, actually my favourite FIFA title, believe it or not. Great game. Pretty sure there's crossover there as well. Fighting Force. Fighting Force, basically, I don't know, it's as close as we would get to um, Bare Knuckle Street Rage. In 3D, kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, was it supposed to be that and then the license was pulled away? I might be thinking of a different game, but it's a fun game. It's an alright game. Final Fantasy, is that 9? Um, my Roman digits were numerals are shite, but it's Final Fantasy. So this is where we get, you know, we get RPGs on it, so that's really, really cool. Future Cup, LAPD, no Scooby whatsoever. Um, Gaia Seed Project Speed Trap, well, Project Seed Trap, no idea. If you know what some of these are, I'm leave in a comment. I should play them or not, but you'd like to see them. Galarians, no Scooby. Uh, Gekido, Urban Fighters, no Scooby, I'm assuming it's a fighting game. <clears throat> Grind, Session, it's a boarding game I guess. I've never heard of it. I mean, you get balls to fucking try and compete with Tony York on that one. Hydro Thunder, Midway, I think that's a port of an arcade machine. I could be wrong. Based on the Namco, uh, you know, sort of PS2 and 360 collections. But if it is, it's a kind of... Well, no, because it's Polygons and I think it's Polygons would be too much of the PlayStation. I'll have to give it a whirl. In the Hunt, uh, no idea. No idea. ISS Pro 98, it's a football game. So, you know, win win. Uh, ISS Pro Evolution 2. Uh, Goo Larry, um, when I showed this on Facebook, um, left a comment asking me if this crashed, because I did delve into it then to see for him, uh, when you go to the memory card screen and it tries to set up a save for you, uh, as his constantly did. 
Mine works fine, which is cool, because I do like these clunky old 3D football games. Uh, showing us where we've come and how lucky we are now. Jake Cohen, no idea. Kajero Deception 2, no idea. Konami Arcade Classics, no idea. But please don't be really, 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 really old ones like Frogger and stuff like that, because I really couldn't care. Uh, Kudelka? No idea. Kurt Warner's Arena Football. Um, so it's American football. Don't know anything about it, but I'll give it all. Lego Racers, I heard that that's pretty pants, actually, but hey, he's a kart racer. Uh, LMA Manager, <clears throat> Scope Masters, I'm telling you, that'd be fantastic. If that sort of game is your bag, baby. LMA Manager 2001, this is where I don't need to kind of double up, regardless of what improvements are made, especially with that. That seems like a cheap entry of three slots that a kart racer, Looney Tunes Racing, did play. I wasn't into my kart racers. LSD Dream Emulator, I'm interested by the title, um, but no idea. Man to talk a full uh, Metal Force, no idea. Magical Mystery Mall, I keep referring to this game as Mary Kate and Ashley go to the mall for some reason, because believe it or not, I do have experience of playing this once. And I, why is this on it? Absolutely shocked and blown away that this is on here. It's an absolute real mind fart. I don't know if they were trying to appeal to kids or something like that, but then if they were, why is nothing else on it so far? of this sort of kiddie nature and it's a fucking awful game so what a waste of a slot Mega Man Legends 2 I'm quite fond of the Mega Man Legends games on PlayStation Mega Man X6 as I am with that good fun solid title that is a waste of a slot that was awful I remember back in the day when it came out thinking it's Resident Evil style game with Men in Black and I love the movie and then it came out and it was just a completely utterly unplayable pile of shit although it could be fun for a gameplay but to me a waste of a slot Mickey's Wild Adventure came out on absolutely everything I don't know if there's included 3D levels using PlayStation hardware in this or it's the same as the Mega CD version but it will be fun to find out and it's a very solid fun title Monsters Inc no idea no idea uh, Mortal Kombat 2 uh, it's Mortal Kombat 2 it's on the PlayStation so you know that works. That does not. That is awful. Skip over that pile of shit. MTV Celebrity Deathmatch played that back in the day based on the acclamation show by MTV where, you know, badly voiced celebrities would duke it out to the death. Awful. That was a uh, MTV Music Generator, Codemasters. I don't know. Why would you play that when you could play music? Is music on it? MTV Sports, skateboarding. I Yeah, pants. Uh, MTV Sports, and these MTV Sports games aren't very good, uh, again, be, that's my subjective opinion, why do you put them on it? That's a fantastic game, uh, Game. it's basically a music creator, and you would think, how could you do that on the PlayStation? It's really simple, but you can actually create some pretty, pretty good stuff. I had a memory card full of the stuff I did back in the day, I would recommend jumping into that, really would. This, that's, that's a brilliant inclusion, but I'm not sure if I'll do a video of it. Copyright reasons, missed, I was never a fan of that, I don't understand why everyone shut their pants on it. N2O uh, Nitrous Oxide, a racing game, I guess, or N2O, uh, no, yeah, NOS. No idea, never played it. Namco, uh, and I love these. Again, probably not the first one because the games are too old, but I do like a good, and these were kind of the first ones that of note with them, like museum side and stuff like that. Volume 2, uh, Namco Museum on Court. So, yeah, I have very warm, fuzzy memories of these, so definitely expect some videos on these. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are very happy that these are on here. NASCAR 98, uh, be interesting to try because these sort of you know early 3D get races based on the Formula 1 engine were alright. NASCAR Rumble, again you're kind of doubling up, might be, uh, Need for Speed 3, 2 sorry, never played this but I do like the Need for Speed, I like Need for Speed 3 and I thought it was an absolutely fantastic game so that's anything like that, um, I mean using the graphic engine the first one, I'm, I'm kind of down with that. Uh, Need for Speed's Porsche Unleashed. Uh, again, I do like these early Need for Speed games. Not played that. Looking forward to that. Great inclusion. NFL Game Day. Never played it. 2097. Uh, again, you're using up spaces you could have just used um, for the best entry in that franchise. No, NFL Extreme, NHL, I do like uh, NFL hockey games on there, the 3D's not age well, but, you know, again, you could have just picked the one that's required the best version in the franchise and then gone with that. Uh, NHL Rock the Rink, never played it. Nuclear Strike, great game, love that game. Uh, Omega Boost, never played it. One, never played it. Pac-Man World, it's alright actually, it's alright. Uh, Panzer Bandit, never played it. Panzer Front, never played it. Panzer Front, this, no. Panzer General, nope. Pepsi Man, that's uh, there's, there's crossover on that. It's a fun kind of promo game. It's not going to win any awards or anything like that, but it's kind of fun on it. Uh, you know, 
I mean, um, Slopes Game Room did a brilliant video on it. Look it up. Populous in the beginning. Everyone likes Populous. Porsche Challenge, great, fantastic driving game. Did, you know, quite, quite well received back in the time, but as the years went by, everyone just went, it's too limited compared to Gran Turismo. It's never supposed to try and be Gran Turismo. Because I'm pretty sure it came out before. Uh, Premier Manager IG, awesome. That's a great game. Gremlin, Gremlin Interactive. Uh, Gremlin were great. But, um, again, doubling up. That's actually a pretty cool game. I really, really like that. Rage Racer. Uh, not my favourite entry into the franchise. That would be Rage Racer Revolution, which is balls hard. But I did like Rage Racer because it tried to mix things up. Uh, Ram, no. Nah. Yeah, no. Nah. Rapid Racer, no idea. Rapid Reload, kind of fun, kind of cool. Think Gunstar Heroes. Raystorm, not for me. Real Fishing, I've never played it, so I do like a fishing game, but none of them really compete with the stuff that was on the Dreamcast. I know this isn't Dreamcast. Resident Evil Survivor, that's one for sort of um, uh, interest. It's not a good game at all, but it piqued my curiosity as it did back then. I'd like to see how this has aged, because i just so down with playing a Resident Evil um, first person shooting game where you control the movements and then you could actually use a gun with it, which you can on this because it's digital. Yes, my favourite. Me and my mate Andy came the shit out of this and we got the uh, the the devil car and we got the angel car by sheer fluke because the devil car, um, or no, the the angel car when we were racing the angel car as a devil car hit us from behind and then stopped dead for some reason and we crossed the finish line. Still have a memory card with those saves. It's balls hard compared to the first one. It's not really that different, but I would definitely recommend it. That's a cool game. That's a cool game. It's Road Rash. My favourite version is still the 3DA, but this runs with a, a higher frame rate and it's it's Road Rash. Road Rash Jailbreak, not so much, but it's it's a good you know title for curiosity. Roadsters, never heard of it, but it's by Titus, so I'm not expecting big things. Road Trip Vacation. No idea, not expecting big things. That's a cool game, believe it or not. That's a really, really cool, fun game. It's not for everyone. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Never played it, but I do like Scooby-Doo. This is a really good mixed bag. I am liking the variation upon it. I may not have heard of a lot of these, but I've heard of quite a few, and I am liking the fact that it's all over the shop and all over genres. That's a great game. Uh, never played. Never played. Man, there's some gameplays I can do in here. Never played. Um got memories of I think I think it was all right all my confusion with the movie Sonic Wing special never played that. yeah uh, probably won't be able to do a gameplay of that for copyright but it's kind of limited but it's a bit fun because everything was mental for South Park back then wasn't it because it was still so new Sofa Strike great game that's not so much there's a whole bunch of um, cheap early games isn't there um, of sort of re imagine 3D versions of original uh, would I say, you know, Atari or Midway games? I'd say Atari. No idea what that is, but it's the shittest game title ever. Spider, the video game. SpongeBob SquarePants. Didn't know there was a SpongeBob game on PlayStation 1. Quite looking forward to trying that. Star Wars Demolition. It's a Star Wars game. Other than that, I don't know anything, so definitely looking forward to that. Would have preferred there to be the Phantom Menace on it. Maybe there is, I don't know. I had that back in the day. It's not a port of the arcade. It's generally considered to be a bit pants, but uh, it plays better on the Saturn. But it plays an alright version of sort of Super Street Fighter. That's the Street Fighter Collection, where you just get three versions, very early versions of Street Fighter 2. Are they okay, perfect? I would guess they probably are on this, so it's kind of cool. Especially since I saw it in Cask the other day and didn't buy it and then regretted it. Street uh, Skater, no idea. Skater 2, no idea. Strider, kind of cool actually, kind of cool. Strider 2 definitely gets better, I like that series, it's not for everyone. Um, if you, you know... I expected more of the original kind of Strider. Siphon Filler 3, great. Siphon Filler series of games were fantastic. Tarzan. Tarzan on the PlayStation was a really, really good game. That's a fun inclusion. Tecmo Super Bowl. It's Tecmo, so I'm assuming it might be good, but I didn't really play many American football games on the PlayStation back in the day. No idea. No idea. Don't really want a 10 pin bowling game. The Adventures of Lomax. No idea. Italian Job bit broken in places but generally a very good fun 3d it's not for everyone but it is if you like the movie um driving game mission based game king of fighters 96 this is where i mean like i talked about we'll touch on fighting sticks don't really need these games because the playstation can't do them justice uh no idea it's lost world need for speed the original need for speed i was always disappointed because it was more of a circuit racing game or completely different or more cars and stuff i wanted it to be because my brother had a 3do back in the day and i have that in that game now i wanted it to be an exact conversion of the original um 3do version it wasn't it's fun and it's great and the need for speed series of this um system is great but that was yeah i wanted the 3do version theme but it's theme park come on 
Thrasher, Skate, Destroy. I never played anything that was, wasn't Tony Hawk's. Uh, Threat of Fate, no idea. To Toko games on this, they're hard. I don't think you can step into it after Gran Turismo, but they're fun. Again, probably just find a Toko, a Toko game that's the best in the series and stack that on there, stop wasting spaces, or maybe this was all the games they had. It's a kart racer, never played it. Treasure the Planet, never played it. Treasure of the Deep, never played it. Twisted Metal, Small Brawl, ah, uh, I played the first two Twisted Metal, never played that, so it's got good heritage, so do look forward to playing that. Ultraman Fighting Evolution, like Ultraman, never played that, so that could be good, but generally all fighting games on this system when it comes to stuff like that are shite. Fee Rally, not for everyone. Everyone thought it was going to be try. That's a crossover game. Try and compete with Sega Rally. Uh, it's no, no near as good, but it's fun. But the sequel is far better, and I definitely recommend it. That's a great game and a good inclusion. Vanguard Bandits, no idea. War of the Worlds, never played it. Um, but yeah, I'm down with War of the Worlds. That might be interesting to see. For the stuff that I haven't played, and I said I'm interested to play it. No spoilers. Uh, Warpath Jurassic Park, no idea. Ooh, I do like some early wrestling games. For your Aston games, I don't think I've played those, so that'll be interesting. Wild Knight, no idea. Williams IK, greatest hits. I'm guessing that stuff like, is it like Joust and stuff? Too early for me, but you know, for purists and old school retro people, that's kind of a cool inclusion. That's brilliant. Not for everyone, very crude 3D graphics by today, but the story is immense. It's Mark Hamill, and you basically play for a movie, and then all the space bits are like Wing Commander, the original games, but with updated graphics. That's a fantastic inclusion. Uh, World League Soccer 99. I never stepped outside of the um, ISS Pro Evolution in FIFA games on the PlayStation 1, so not a Scooby. That's, yeah, my brother had that back in the day and he quite liked it. I played the Thrill Kill version because this is like the watered down censored version of that. So, I mean, it should play all right. Good inclusion. Haven't played it, but do, like I said, look forward to playing early wrestling games. Uh, I'm pretty sure I have played that and I have a video of it and it, it's all right. No idea. That's broken as hell. That's that's a terrible game, but fun for shits and giggles, if you know what I mean. The world is not enough. Um, trying to be Goldeneye, basically, and it's a really good, fun third-person shooter. I recommend that. I did like it. People kind of gave shit on it because it wasn't Goldeneye. That's a fun game, third-person shooter. Got gameplay of that. You want to see it? That's a cool inclusion. Uh, never played it. Never played it. And there you go. Do you know what? I haven't played a lot, but well, no, I've played about 50, not played with about 50%. There's a wide range across all genres, you know, RPG, action, adventure, fighting, uh, you know, like stuff like uh, simulation and things like that. You know, like The Sims, I mean, stuff like that. Uh, roller coaster simulator, stuff like that, too. That's a pretty good, impressive, and you got shit to people like Pepsi Man. The crossover, what was it, three, four? Not as bad, but still disappointing that it's on there by the same people who make it. But not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Right, let's round up. Right, so as you can see, it clearly is the biggest of these sticks. It does exactly what it says on the box. There's some very, very, very good games in there. There's some very poor games, but I find interesting that they're on there because I have a soft spot for them, such as um, Resident Evil Survivor, because I was mad for that game uh, when I was a kid before I played it and it was a bit pants because it was playing Resident Evil and shooting zombies from that, you know, uh, the Resident Evil universe in first person. Punches above a little bit above its weight, but it tried to do something different and ultimately is a bit poor. Um, you know, there are fighters, there are RPGs, there is something from, as you would expect, 200 games, there is something from every type or genre of game on this stick, and that's really, really, really cool. I do not, for the life of me, understand why Mary Kate and Ashley was on there. I absolutely do not get that. I mean, the, safe to say these sticks are going to be aimed at, do I say, I don't know if I would say diehard, but I would definitely say solid, solid gamers. Probably grew up with the PlayStation and stuff like that. And that certainly would not be, it's a game that was considered shit when it came out. Um, but certainly would not be considered something that anyone would want to play, you know, of you know of our type of gamer then uh certainly now on here did they run out of games comes back to the crossover obviously there are some crossovers again there are some crossovers not as many as i thought there would be which is a good thing but there are still some crossovers on there but again mary kate and ashley go to the mall or whatever it is it's rubbish i mean no one if you're a kid now if a dad's going to let their child play this they're not even going to know who those people are and if they do know who they are because they were kids back then then they're not going to care now uh, and they're not going to want to play it and if they did play it back then they would know that it was shit um because i have played it yeah um yeah <laughs> don't ask me why it's it's yeah um because it is shit and yeah it's just it just it blows my mind that that's included on it absolutely blows my mind but 
biggest selection of games on on all these sticks and it's you know i mean you could argue it it's for anyone that you think is shit someone else i've said this before is probably going to think it's pretty good and tidy and awesome and love it very very much apart from mary kate and ashley so it's weird it's a, it's a subjective thing but with 200 games there's got to be and the price of this stick because i still don't think it's much anything above 20 quid dependent upon where you buy it a lot less if you buy it from you know chinese sites and stuff like that but yeah, I mean, it's 200 games. It's easily the best of the two other sticks I have. It really is, you know, despite... Ignore the crossover and stuff like that. You just get so many games on here. I mean, unless you really want a specific game, if you watch my other videos, then you would buy that stick for that game. But then if you really want a specific game, you're the sort of person who probably would not go the route of the True Blue Mini and would just hack it yourself to build a memory stick containing everything exactly what you want and no hit or miss titles or anything like Mary Kate. And Ashley, but if you aren't that person, I would honestly say don't buy. It's, it's not worth buying all three sticks. You know, look at my other videos and see what's on there that you like, and possibly buy that stick. But if you're just going to buy one above all others for the price, and, and it really doesn't cost that much more than the other ones for the price alone and the sheer number of games, you know, two hundred and something games, get this one. Absolutely get this one. I mean, I'm very, very thankful to the people who sent it to me. I'm still kind of wondering why there's crossover. I'm not going to lie in the inclusion of that game. But it's a solid, solid product. I am a fan of this range of sticks, particularly if you don't want to go the route of hacking it yourself. You know, I know people are shouting and screaming, it's not that difficult. Reasons I said earlier on, internet and stuff. So, really, really, really cool. If I wasn't given this for free, I would probably buy it, knowing what the game list is on it. But it's the last time I'm going to do a True Blue Mini, least for the PlayStation Classic, because I do have one for the Mega Drive, winging its way to me. So, yeah, definitely, definitely, this is, of the three, or, I mean, if you're massively into fighters, then you're just going to go to the fighting one, aren't you? But, you know, as I said, there's enough fighters on the other sticks. Um, if you're not to but like to dabble in that genre to keep you happy now people have said this is nothing to do with you know the topic of the video but i wanted to put it out there because i saw people saying you can plug all four sticks into the usb hub uh or three and a pad and fire them up all at one and they all show it that's not true that's not true i've not done it so maybe there are people out there screaming at the screen and saying it is true it is true i've watched a bunch of videos because i was thinking about doing it and all the videos said the same thing um to fire up that many memory sticks, you need a powered USB hub because there won't be enough juice coming off the system itself. I mean, I've watched a few videos on this, a few from different you know, content producers, and that's the conclusion I've come to. So much so that I'm not risking it because even though I have a backup uh, PlayStation Classic in the cupboard because I got it on Amazon Day for 15 quid, you know, because it's not the shit system people say it is. It was a shit system by Sony because of the complete lack of effort, love, attention, and having shit power arms on it because they needed the games that consisted of all the languages for all the regions they were putting it in. That was all pants. Uh, you know, there's no rewinds and stuff like that out of the box, you know, in filters and stuff like that. It's, it's shit. But once you do stuff like this, it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth owning. So even if I have a backup one and I could risk fucking around with one, this one, possibly frying it, not going to happen. Absolutely not going to happen. Because here's the thing. The ones I've seen who get USB powered hubs, plug it in and plug in all the sticks, it doesn't show up. Like I said, maybe people can do it. Maybe there's a way to do it. I have not seen those videos yet. But every one of the four videos I've seen said the same thing. It makes the internal power of the unit go absolutely mental it, can't, it cannot handle it it does not put all the games into the list at the top i mean i don't even know if it could read all the discs the, the sticks simultaneously but they said they could see from the lights going up and down on the system and that there was there was voltage going up and down in it and they did not recommend it because they did not risk want to risk frying playstation classic so i mean if you know how it's done Good for you. I looked around and I could not find it. So I just thought I would put it out there for anyone who's heard this as well and was going to jump blindly into it. I'm pretty sure no one would do that. They would look up a video first, but you never know. So I just wanted to tack that on the end of this video, the final uh, uh, True Blue Mini for PlayStation Classic that I will take a look at. Thank you to the people who sent it to me. Thank you to the distributors. Very much appreciated. It is a good, very good, solid stick. The best of the three, at least for me unless you want a specific game from the other ones, but then you would just go the route of hacking it yourself. Anyway, as always, I'd absolutely love to know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.